tagliata messa fuori c'è Pirlo 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 ancora Pirlo di Tecco tiro Hello and welcome to this week's AC Milan Talk podcast. I'm your host, Samit Paul, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend, Jason Brown. JB, how you doing? I'm doing very good, mate. Very good. Good man. Right, so things are pretty boring on the transfer front, Jace. How dare Milan not give us a new signing for two weeks? But we look <laughs> back at some key talking points from the win over Cryova, how the Bonucci and Biglia situation played out, and we'll be discussing some interesting comments you picked up from Marcel Desailly. All that and a Milan Betis preview too. But first, Jace, let's start by looking back at last week's win over Cryova. Obviously, it's not getting to the game too much. Everyone saw it, everyone saw the results, so we know what happened. But 2 0 on the second leg, we advanced 3 0 on aggregate. Um, goals for Bonaventura and Cotrone won it for us. Yeah. Before we get into individual performances and just the team in general, uh, talk about the crowd, because um, a lot of headlines were made with the fact that there was over 65,000 at San Siro for you know, a Europa League qualifier, which is superb in itself. I'm looking forward to just sit, having a different atmosphere at the stadium. We've seen yeah. for the last three or four years how aggressive and how, I wouldn't say it's a toxic atmosphere, but you know, fans are very, very quick to jump on the players at San Siro in the last few years. And not only is it going to be packed on a regular basis, or at least we hope, but it seems that the fans are going to get behind the players and you know, you know, know, cheer them on and get behind them. So that can only be a positive thing for the players, right? Oh, definitely. I mean... Talk about, you know, the 12th man, that's a real thing. And, you know, it works both ways. I think I mentioned last week, you know, when, when you've got the crowd behind you, you do get that lift. And when they're against you, it does weigh you down. So I think the new signings, everyone's excited. There's like a, a good atmosphere around the club and around the fan base. So we saw that like the other night with the crowd and the way that everything was. And I think if we can start the season really well and the fans like get behind the team, I think, like you say, we could see a massive shift in, in the atmosphere, which can only do positives for the way the team performs. 100%. And I guess it works both ways, right? I mean, you've got to have yeah. performances on the, the pitch to kind of get the fans on side and behind you. And we did get that last week. I felt like the side was you know, full of energy in contrast to what we've seen you know, last season as well. When Montella obviously trying to build a brand of football, he wasn't able to do that, I didn't feel. But with the sort of technical players he's got now, I felt like we played some nice football, good composure, some quality on the ball. Albeit, let's all take that maybe you know take that with a pinch of salt that it you know was cry over and there's going to be tougher tests to come. But were you impressed with the kind of style, the way that you know Milan looked comfortable building play from the back and going through the the, the, the motions if you, if you like and building good movements? Yeah, definitely. Like you say, I think Montella has always been trying to build towards this. And he's finally got the players to be able to do that. And we, we've seen in the friendlies, you know, we've seen this kind of building towards this. But it's kind of, it looks as if you can see the, the real improvement in, you know, having played together in, you know, three or four friendlies. It's starting to become a little bit um, crisper, a bit smoother. And I'm just, you know, waiting to see what happens start of the league where, you know, we've got everyone in. You know, the big men come back in that were out for these um, qualifiers and we start to see the type of patterns and the, the play that we know that this team can can weave, like you said, with the technical players that we've brought in. So it was it was nice to see. It was exciting. really was. I want to make a bold statement. I honestly believe that Napoli, for me, play the best football in Serie A, at least in my opinion, and people can disagree, that's fine, but... I think yeah. they play a really nice brand of football under Sarri and I know they get stick for not winning things, but I do enjoy watching them. But I really think Milan will be a team to watch in terms of style of football this season. Um, how important is that for you? Especially with, you know, every, take everything into consideration, the takeover and all the new players coming in. Obviously, yeah. it's a results-based business and Montella will be judged on that. But to build that brand of great football, that's that's got to be, you know, part and parcel of it as well. I think it is, but I think, you know, coming from where, where we've come from, more importantly, you know, I'd, I'd rather we play ball in Route 1 and, and get back in the Champions League than some nice flowing Chris football and, and just miss out on that. So there, it, it is a balance, I, I see what you're saying. And I take your point about Napoli. I think Napoli plays some great stuff. But, you know, the way Juve, Juve play great stuff when they have the opportunity to play great stuff, when they need to get dirty and, and stuck in, they get dirty and stuck in. So I'm hoping that we 
like me and we kind of follow that approach and we, we mentioned it last season you know with some of the games um you know we were kind of held by by a tough yeah. defense and, and a team that just was not interested in playing they just wanted to you know stifle us so yeah, yeah. if we can mix the two i think that'd be great but definitely you know when everything's flowing i agree i think milan will be up there with in terms of style will we'll be one of the the one to look out for next season, especially, like you say, with the players we've brought in. Absolutely. I think you've stumped me there. I think I've contradicted myself there, haven't I, just by bringing up Napoli. Like I said, great football, but it's Juve, yeah. that, Juve that win it. Yeah. Just watch Madrid yeah. as well, so I think I've got Modric, Cruz, <laughs> those boys in my <laughs> head just stringing things together nicely. But yeah. no, good point, very good point. Um, just to look at some individuals before we move on to three of the Italian players that I want to you know, go into a bit more depth on. I think Masakio continues to be, look, you know, he looks great in pre-season. He looked great in these qualifiers, not only from a defensive point of view, but, you know, on the ball. He looks like, you know, slot him next to Bonucci and uh, Romagnoli. I think, you know, we've got some really good ball-playing defenders there. Conti came in, full of energy down that right side. Uh, I know you like to hear stats, Jace. Uh, he made the most yep. interceptions with five in that game and the most open crosses with four. And it was actually just a relief to see crosses finding their targets. Uh, yeah, we've seen Abate and De Chilio for the last few years, cross after cross, never finding a Milan head. And you know it was good to see Rodriguez on the other flank as well, producing the goods. So happy days in that sense. Uh, Frank the Tank is what we're going to call him from the rest of the season, Jace. <laughs> I like that, Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank in the midfield, <laughs> Bob bossing things as always. Unbelievable yeah. strike. I'm absolutely gutted that goal didn't stand. Um, but yeah. hopefully we'll see some goals from him this season. But no, another great performance from him. And uh, some nice creativity from Bonaventura and Suso as well. Nice to see Suso yeah. back on the pitch. But take away the, uh, you know, we're going to talk about Donnarumma, Locatelli and Catrone. But of those guys that I just mentioned, were you impressed with anyone in particular or just as a whole, the team putting everything together? I think you got to say as a whole, but again, we've mentioned this this man, you know, Kessie's the, the one, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's he's just exciting to watch, like you say. He's he's got a little bit of everything, and just where he is, he, he, he being in the middle, you kind of there's a focus on the players. I think in the middle, when they're performing, you really notice it, and when they're not, you really notice it. But Kessie's definitely performing at the minute, and he, we're definitely noticing it. He's playing some uh, some great football. Definitely. I know we saw bits of it last season with Atalanta and I'm just a little bit hesitant at this point. You know, it's pre-season and, you know, the competitive stuff is where you've got to make your real judgments. But have yeah. you seen enough in Kessie to, to kind of know that he'll step up and deliver against well, what's, uh, the big boys, obviously against, uh, you know, Juventuses and Napoli's in Serie A? But has he got the quality, do you think, to kind of deliver on the big stages as well, rather than just against the likes of cry over and in pre-season? You know, there's positive signs that he's going to be a, a real force for Milan moving forward. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, you mentioned it there. We, we saw bits of it um, with At Atalanta. And, you know, this Milan team, in my opinion, I know the season hasn't kicked off yet, but much better, better team or better group of players, should I say, than Atalanta did last season. So having Kessie... Um, playing alongside the, the likes of Benucci and, and Big Deer and, you know, the players that we have, I think we'll just see um, a kind of improved version of him than last season. So I'm looking forward to it. I think he, he's definitely got enough. And I think personally, he's up for the challenge. You know, he was very keen to come and play at Milan. And I think, you know, he knows what that Milan badge and that shirt signifies. And he knows... I'm sure he's aware of the players that have come before him and played in that position for this great club and I think he wants to put himself up there with uh, the Milan greats. Yep, no, I think so. I think uh, he's going to go from strength to strength to strength for me. I think uh, all positive signs so far and uh, he'll, only, yeah. he'll only get better with maturity and uh, more experience at the top level. So happy days with Frank the Tank. Um, right, let's start with Donnarumma. I always hark back to the points that you made when we were talking about his contract because we saw it in the first leg and we saw it in the second one and I believe the cryover manager, Davis Mangia, mentioned it that you know Donnarumma was decisive essentially in this tie. He made a yeah. massive save away from home when it was nil-nil, I believe. He made another big, big save at San Siro. Just talk to me about that. I mean, the, you know, we saw him as well get a great reception from the fans ahead of kickoff. You know, um, you mentioned it time and time again in pre-season earlier in the summer, how he would change the kind of opinion from fans, you know, make a big save, you know, give the badge a thump, everything will be forgotten. 
we're almost at that. Are we? Are we? Have we passed that stage? Are we? Are we reaching that stage, Jace? Or are we? You know, has he put everything in the past already for you? I think you know, judging by the reception he got, I think yeah, he has. You know, to be honest, I, I didn't think it will happen this early, but uh, it seems that you know the the crowd definitely um, do love him, and you know, I've kind of almost. You mentioned the contact situation. I've kind of forgotten it already <laughs> myself. So yeah, definitely, like you say, pulled out massive save um in it well two massive saves in, in both of those uh legs and like the uh Crowover manager said they were decisive and I think you know that doesn't go unnoticed and as fans I know I certainly like, I mean, like you say mentioned it at the time how important he would be um staying at, at the club and I think we're starting to realize that now and you know there's no use in harping back to what could have happened and we just got to enjoy him why is here? Why is a Milan player? You know, why is still in goal, pumping the badge and 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 all, and all that? So, I think, yeah, I'd say it was forgiven. He's he's definitely a Milan player. Yeah, I don't think you would say it was forgiven with um, his money grabbing agent, but definitely with <laughs> him, I think, yeah, it's all love. Yeah. Don Don Arima. We don't like Raiola. Let's not really <laughs> yeah. talk about that man. But no, I was really happy to see that reception. I thought it was great and uh, it gives him a boost as well just to know that the fans are behind him. Uh, yeah, time to forget, move on. Everything's good. So uh, if he can continue making big saves, he's he spoke after the game and said how much he, you know, he's kind of he, like you said, he's he's forgotten what happened over the summer and it's it's business as yeah. usual for him now. So good yeah. to see him making big saves and uh hopefully well hopefully he doesn't have to make many more, but when called upon he, he does, so all good on that front. Moving into midfield, Jace, let's talk about Locatelli. We spoke about him last week and, what well, you know, with regards to how we want Montella to, to relegate Montalivo down the pecking order, push Locatelli up and kind of have him as the understudy behind Biglia. Really, really good performance. I think he stood out for me, among others, but just a couple of stats for you from the game against Cryova. 117 total passes, 93.2% pass completion, 100% aerials won, six recovered balls, just his general, I know he kept it quite simple in the first half, Jace, but you know he stepped up in the second as well. He kind of a bit more expansive. I just thought it was a really mature and top performance, exactly what we wanted to see from him. Uh, you know, the competition is raised. The Kessie's come in, Bigley has come in, so he's he's fighting for his place. It was just a really, really good performance for me, and he proved that he can string things together when given the opportunity. So, was that a box ticked for you, just in terms of him being the understudy to Bigley this season, or do you think that? Montella might not see it that way and he might still be, you know, behind Mon- Montalivo or Sosa even. No, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, box ticked. I think he definitely is aware that, you know, competition is, is stiff and I think he's raised his game. And I think it's a great opportunity for Montella to use, you know, a little bit of healthy competition to get the best out of Lacatelli and it seems to be working so far. You know, if you can continue to manage it throughout the season, then it will only do, you know, major... Um, major bonuses for, for the for the club, you know, having all these players, you know, kind of competing for those spots and and having to pull out, you know, their best performances to to stay in the team. So I was definitely impressed with, with what he did, you know. Can't complain really, like you say, simple yet effective, you know. He he did everything that was required and it we saw last season, I guess, when it when he doesn't play he can get a little bit, you know, disheartened, but Hopefully it doesn't affect his performances because I do agree. I think he still is the understudy, but he definitely needs to be considered. If he keeps putting performances out like this and, you know, if Big Leo or, or others aren't performing, then I think he does deserve a starting spot. But it's about him continuing this this level of um, performance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, if Big Leo's, you know unavailable injury suspension or otherwise, then yeah, Locatelli would be the first person on my list to slot in and take that position. But yeah, it's something that you, I think you mentioned during the middle of last season or maybe earlier this summer, but the benefit of having these better players around him, not only in training every day, but on the pitch itself, how big of an influence is that for him? Because, you know, we saw last season where he was almost in that deep line midfield role. He was almost a man to make things happen. It, everything went through him and he had to make things tick. And, you know, maybe was it pressure? Was it just the inconsistency, the lack of maturity just wasn't there for him to kind of keep that level of quality that he had when he first got into the team. You're now having Bonucci behind you. You've got Musacchio and Romagnoli building play, helping you build play from behind. You've got Suso, Hakan, uh, Bonaventura. You've got so many other players around him 
that can provide that creativity now, how big of a you know bonus is that for him to make him look better? Yeah, it's massive for me. You know, given his age, you know, it's, it's only nineteen. He can't be looked upon as, or he shouldn't be looked upon as, you know, the main guy. And I think, like you say, that season that kind of wore on him a little bit. But having the players that he can learn off, that he can watch, that he can kind of use as his barometer, I think is only going to benefit him and the club. And I think, like like you say. You know, if he, he continues to, you know, work hard in training, learning from these guys, he's going to become an amazing player in the future. And, you know, hopefully he's, he's still with the club. And it's kind of natural um, natural progression, isn't it? Like, you, you buy in these quality players, hopefully that trickle-down effect on your youth players. And then once these quality players move on, your youth players are ready to step up and fill those shoes. Yep, so now for me, the, the message is more Locatelli and more Catrone. Another top performance from yeah. a young, young man. Uh, he became the youngest Milan player to score in a European competition since Pato scored in February 2009 versus Werder Bremen. I'm just going to throw some quotes at you first from the young man himself. Uh, scoring in front of 65,000 fans is a dream. It was amazing. The transfer market, I hope to stay at Milan, but the club will decide. I'll do whatever it takes to convince everyone. I like to run and help the team that's my job but if I score that's even better Jace that that kind of last bit of that comment stood out for me because aside from the goals that he scored in pre-season and in this qualifier his all-round movement and cleverness is really impressing me for such a young player um, you know obviously he works hard he's got a point to prove he wants to stay at the club you know he doesn't want to get shipped out on loan but it's just that sort of football brain that he's got that kind of makes me think do you know what we've got a real gem on our hands here have you seen that of him as well? And, you know, has he now established himself as a key part of, I wouldn't say the team, I know he's not going to start this season, but as a part of the squad as a whole, do you think he's now established himself in, in Montella's squad? Uh, I, I like to think so. I think, you know, from a fan um, point of view, he's definitely kind of in our in our hearts, isn't he? You know, as the, you know, the young kid come through doing well. And you always like to see that, don't you? You, you don't want to see your, your youth players... If, especially when they're performing, you don't want to see them shipped out. I know sometimes it is good for their development for them to be on, on the own, but when they're scoring, you kind of want them there. You want them to make those appearances, you know, when needed, um, needed, you know, to come on and, and, and do what you believe that they can do. So I hope Montella sees that and obviously sees the reaction that he's getting and, and thinks, you know, it is worth keeping him in, in the squad. Um, like you say, I don't think he'll be starting in the team but definitely he's got the ability that you know if we need to call upon someone at certain times or even if in a game where it's very comfortable and he can get a run out I think it's worth definitely having him in in the squad and he wants to be there he doesn't want to go out like you said he wants to work hard and, and do what he can for the team and, and that's the right thing to have that kind of attitude to say you know, if if so and so does want to do the running, put me on, boss, and, and I'll do it. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid of the dirty work. I yeah. just want to work for me, and I think that's great. Hundred percent. It almost is a blessing in disguise for me because he does what Lapadula does. If yeah. you like the, the dirty work, like you said, and the running off the ball, the pressing. But he also he knows how to. He, he can snatch a goal in the box. You saw that in the cryover game. Yeah. I mean, that's like the perfect combination, like you said, isn't it? If Andre Silva's not bagging goals, if this striker that's supposed to be arriving, if he eventually does arrive, if they don't score the goals, then having Catrone on the bench to throw on last 20 minutes, give him a run out and you know take advantage of a great situation, then he's almost a perfect you know young player to bring on onto the pitch, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Like you say, he's, he's got that enthusiasm yep. to match the uh, talent. Absolutely. So for you, Locatelli and Catrone, I think I know the conversation's kind of died down now. It does feel like both are staying, but both to stay, Jace. No loan deals for either. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, definitely both both to stay. Going to be a lot of games played next season, so we're going to need you know all the players we can. And, and when you got winning players and players with the ability of Lacatelli and Catrone, you, you got to keep them. I think. Yep, couldn't agree more. I think uh, both men have got to stay. I'd like to see both get some decent minutes this season and uh, continue their development. So good stuff. Let's, uh, let's hope we see more of them. Right, moving on to Bonucci and Biglia, Jace. They were obviously paraded in front of the San Siro crowd last week before kickoff. Um, weren't able to play due to the fact there was a lack of economic guarantees and bank bonds and all that financial jargon we won't get into. But, you know, 
this whole situation brought out a lot of talk from rivals and you know certain media outlets raising question marks over the signings, over Milan, over their financial position. And it almost felt like it was just, you know, an ongoing theme from before the takeover was completed. You know, we spoke at length week after week about the takeover and, mm. you know, Yong Hong Lee, are oh, the finances there? You know, how's he going to do with this, you know, loan that he's taking from Elliot? How's it all going to work? Are Milan, you know, financially okay? This was all sort of, you know, continuation of that, if you like, with the Bonucci Biglia thing. And I think, you know, certain outlets like Football Italia got a lot of stick for this. You know, they kind of picked up on reports in Italy suggesting that there were problems and, you know, Milan fans on Twitter, you know, weren't impressed and they they, they made them, their feelings felt pretty much. But the key for me throughout this whole thing, CEO Marco Fasone, from start to finish, he said that there were no absolutely no issues with this whole thing, that Bellucci and Bigler would be registered eventually, August the 11th, I think his date was, but eventually it was August the 4th or something like that. Um, yeah. They'd be registered, everything would be fine, the bank bonds would arrive, blah, 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 and they'd be ready to play in the start area and in the Europa League playoffs. What's the lesson here, Jace? Because for me, the thing that I took away from it was that let's just stop worrying. If the club and Fasone promise us something, and, you know, others disagree, they can disagree, whatever. But the fact that the word from the club throughout this whole thing was that, no, nope, there are no issues at all. Everything's in line and things will be sorted out in due course. Is that the kind of thing now for you? So just complete trust in Fasone in terms of the financial side of things and, you know, the promises that he makes to us? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, his story never changed. So it's not like we had any reason to distrust him. I think certain you know news outlets just have slow days and they need some stuff to write about <laughs> so um they make things up but yeah the i think i think that you know the fact that like you say for has been consistent not just on this issue but pretty much everything that's been going on at the club is he's kept us you know abreast of every situation and he, he's been very transparent and like i said you know there hasn't been any flip flopping with stories and things so i think you know he's proven that you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's got a handle on everything. You know, and we just got to trust him and believe him when he says, you know, these players will be secured and, and, and I believe him. There were obviously question marks. Of, uh, it still is a run, running theme, isn't it? I guess f building on the fears of the takeover in, you know, in from the beginning. But like I said, Fasona's done nothing. Everything's been brilliant from him so far ever since he took his role. And uh, there's, there's no reason to not trust him and just go with his word. So, yeah. Glad to see it all wrapped up, you know, Bonucci and Biglia will uh, be available for selection in the Europa League uh, qualifier next next week. So, you know, it's a relief to have it all wrapped up and uh, looking forward to seeing them in competitive action now. So, all good. We move forward and we'll have a couple of uh, more new faces, Jace, for us to an analyse next week. So, all good on that yeah. front. Good stuff. Um, I did mention that there's no transfers, but uh, rumours and speculation continue to fly back and forth. So I'm going to run through a few names that we obviously spoke about last week and in previous weeks. But let's kick things off with Aubameyang Jace. He continues to flirt with a move back to Milan. Uh, I believe he liked a Twitter post this week suggesting that Dortmund's valuation of him was the only thing holding him back. I mean, we've spoken about him at length, but it almost feels like, you know, based on the reports that we're hearing in Italy, that he still remains the kind of dream signing, if you like. Are Milan fighting a losing battle with him? Do you think it's, you know, taking into consideration what Dorman wants and how important he is to them? Do you have, you know, give me a percentage, if you like, how confident would you be at this stage that we might end up seeing him back in a Milan shirt by the end of the transfer window? It's, it's very hard to say, isn't it? Because I think, you know, Dortmund keep putting these ridiculous price tags on their players. I think I read they put, um, I think, 90 mil on uh, Dembele as yeah, well. Yeah. So, you know, they, they obviously don't want, to, don't want to lose players, but it's not like they've come out and said they're not going anywhere. They have put values on and I think that's quite telling um, in the fact that, you know, they obviously don't want to lose them, but they're thinking, you know, in, in today's current market, if a player doesn't want to stay, he doesn't want to stay, there's not much he can do, you might as well try and get the most out of it that we can. So I think if Milan hadn't, hadn't done so much spending um, prior to this, my percentage would be a, a lot higher because I think, you know, like say we take over, we've got the money um, to invest and I think if, if we are desperately in need of a striker, I think, you know, we would have gone in and invested but we've already got silver, 
you know, we've, we've brought a lot of players. Catrone is kind of proven that he can score goals. I think the percentage of this happening is quite low at the minute, to be honest. I'm going to say probably about 30%, just because I don't think, you know, for, for the amount that they're asking, I don't think we, we need him that desperately. Yeah, I'd agree. I think it will continue to drag on until the end of the window, I'm sure. I think we've taken a step back, haven't we, in this window? I think we've yeah. bought, gone out and bought 10 players and for Sone and Mirabelli have thought, you know what, we just need one additional piece up top. Let's just take stock of the situation, assess our options and make a decision in the next you know, two weeks or so. So I think, for me, I'd agree with you. I think my you know, sort of rating on Aubameyang coming back is, is pretty low at this point, but... They've surprised us on many occasions this summer, Jay. So we'll have to. They have indeed. We'll have, yeah. to, we'll have to wait and see if they pull another <laughs> one out of the bag. Uh, yeah. Just worth just noting, by the way, that at low underscore Kiamavano underscore K wanted us to chat about various targets up front. So thank you for your question. So let's just carry on on that theme. Diego Costa was a man that we spoke at length about last week, Jace. Um, the latest that kind of came out after our pod was that he only wants Atletico Madrid. If a guy wants to play for one club. You know, so badly, I think Milan are probably looking elsewhere at this point now. They've they've moved away. The speculation has died down. You know, in that situation, is it best to move on if he if he is just desperately searching for that return to back to Spain? Uh, yeah, I think it is. You know, I think I, I saw him in a in a Milan. No, sorry, not in Milan. In a Madrid shirt a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> yeah. and he's still a Chelsea player. So. Um, <laughs> It's crazy, but you know they they do have a transfer ban, so they can't actually buy anyone, can they? No, no. Which is a weird thing. So, in that sense, you're kind of thinking, surely we can go in for him if, if he doesn't want to play for Chelsea. Chelsea don't want him to play, but the club he wants to go to can't buy anyone until January. Kind of thinking there is an opportunity there, but if the player is set on uh, going back to a club that he enjoyed some good times at, then I think it will be extremely difficult to convince him to. Uh, to, to come out to Italy and, you know, give up on that dream and start a new life in a country he's, he's never lived in before. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that will be... that. I don't see that one getting done either, to be honest. No, I agree. I think the, the issue with that is Milan are... They're hesitant to go with that short-term fix, if you like. Where, you know, yeah. Atletico Madrid can obviously, in January, is a different situation, but Milan aren't interested in a short-term solution. They want Diego Costa to buy into the project, if you like, for the next two, three years. Yeah, uh, is that the right? That's that's the right strategy, surely, isn't it? To take, you know, if you want to build, if you're trying to build something for the, the long term, you want players that are not sitting here thinking, yeah, I'll just come here for six months, then I'll go back to Spain, play for Atletico, get in the Spain squad, and carry on with them for the rest of my career. But that's 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 got to be the, the the outlook, isn't it, from Milan's point of view to to look for targets that like they've bought with the ten players that they've brought in that they're looking at the long term strategy. Yeah, I think it is, um, but. You know, to play devil's advocate a little bit, the fact that we haven't been in the Champions League for about five years, the fact that Diego Costa is is a lethal goal scorer, and the fact that we've had last season a lot of lone players, and some of them have worked out, some of them haven't. You know, would it be worth going into Chelsea and say, okay, you don't want this player? He wants to go to a club that can't buy him yet. Let's have him on a season uh, long loan, and let you know, Atletico Madrid coming for him next season. Because I think a season of Diego Costa, just there, maybe not even, this is where it gets tricky because you wouldn't want to start him, like you say, invest in him, knowing that he's only going to be there short term. But having him as an option, yeah. you know, especially we talked about how Leaf it is and, and his whole playing style, having him as an option to fire us back into the Champions League, it, you know, it might be something to think about. No, that's a fair point. I don't know if you know this, Jace, but I don't really like him. Uh, <laughs> so so, so the, the, this whole this new update for me was music to my ears. So I, I'm yeah. quite pleased with this. But 100, percent I still, as I said last week to you, I completely know where you're coming from. So if it does happen, then fine. But um, it seems like it's it's been it's, it's disappearing into the distance at the moment. But yeah, we'll I, I don't think it will we'll get done. But yeah, no. Um, Kalinic is still a name that's floating around again I don't know whether that's a realistic one anymore it seems like the closer we get to the start of the season do Fiorentina want to sell him you know they're, they're making their own plans they've got to build around somebody so whether or not he's an option still I don't know the two names that continue to be floated around and I think Mirabelli specifically kind of he didn't confirm nor deny either but he did you know specifically mention the two and I think Fasone did the same 
and I want to get your take on it. Firstly, let's talk about Ibrahimovic. Uh, I know Man United is still an option for him, but a return for him, would that be a positive thing for Milan? Uh, I think we talked about it um, last week, didn't we? That just roughly. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of changing my mind on this. I, I was uh, probably you know dead set against it uh, when we talked about it last week, but I'm kind of coming around to it a little bit more. Um, I think you know as that that number two guy, he could do well. Um, you know, was he 34, 35 now? Yeah, 35. I yeah, 35. Yeah, still. You know, in the Premier League, a tough league, he scored 16 goals last year, yep. which isn't to be scoffed at, really. Um, but the only thing then is he's another short-term player. You're not going to expect to get three, two, three seasons out of him, are you? Do you know what I mean? So yep. it's one of those. But, you know, the fact that he's a, an old legend, it would be nice to have him back and he can definitely score us a few goals. Yeah. Again, Jace, I think you might know this, but I quite like him. <laughs> I've, I've, I've always rated Zlatan. But um, my thing with him is the injury. I think yeah. if he was fully fit and ready to go at the start of the season and give us a year, then I'd probably be all aboard and say, yep, let's get him in, him and Silva, and just alternate or play them together, and I think it'd be great. But this injury, I know people are saying that he's ahead of schedule and he might be back by October, November time, but is that really a risk that we we can take? I personally don't think so. We're going to be light for the first six months of the season. It's not a good, not a good idea to me. So, yeah, I think, like I said, absolutely love him, legend. But at this point, I think it's a, it's probably a bad bad decision to be thinking about a return for him. But we'll see. Falcao, Jace is another interesting one. Uh, I know a lot of people have kind of said no. Let's look for younger options. Let's look for you know, again, he's he's, he's returned to his top form at Monaco, but. There are you know potentially better options out there. What are your thoughts on Falcao as a potential signing? He's um, a good striker. You know he had a good season last year. We know his time in the Premier League didn't really work out for him, but definitely did have a good season last year. I, I don't see this one happening just simply because I don't think Monaco are, are keen on getting their team completely <laughs> ripped to shreds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he would. I think he he would do well um, at Milan. But I just don't see it happening as a, as a, as a, um, a transfer. But I'd, I wouldn't be against that if it did, to be honest. No, I mean I'd, I'd welcome it. But like I said, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's definitely a case of Monaco. How many players can yeah. they afford to lose? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's pretty pretty dire. So no, can't see that one happening. It does raise the question though, Jason. I mean, who is it? <laughs> Who's it going to be after all this talk? Yeah. It seems like everyone's kind of floating away, um, and we're moving further and further away from finding a solution. So it's. Um, it's becoming a tough one. I, I genuinely don't know who, who we're going to end up bringing in, but the most likely for me probably be Kalinic at this stage, I think. Yeah. I, I do think that um, if a Monaco player is to, to leave, it will be Mbappe. And then wherever he goes, may it be Madrid or Manchester City, I think there'll be a little bit of movement there. Yeah. So, you know, you're looking at possibly Aguero or that um, Asensio from yep. Madrid, is it? Yeah. Or even possibly even Bale, whether or not Bale will then move to the Premier League and then that will free up another player. But I think the um, transfer merry-go-round has still got a little bit left in it. So I think some other targets may come, may become available in, in the next week or so. Uh, one man that looks like he's off and you know Milan are cutting him from squads and stuff and his agent continues to talk about, you know dropping hints about back to Sevilla or the move elsewhere in Europe is Carlos Baca. Pretty clear he's going, and if that does happen, then Jace, that obviously that means we really do need another striker to come in. So I want to see the back yeah. of him. I've had enough of seeing him last season. Uh, we've spoken at length about his limitations, particularly in Montella's team. So for me, let's sell him, get that money in, and uh, go out for another another target of ours. So fingers crossed yeah. that, that all falls into place. But like I said, I think it's going to be a, a domino effect. We'll have to be patient and wait and see what happens in the next two to three weeks. Moving forward, away from transfer talk, you picked up on some interesting comments from Marcel Desailly. I'll read yeah. the quote out for everyone and then I'll get your thoughts. So he was speaking about Milan's summer investment and had this to say. They've been buying quite a lot of players, but it will not be enough for the next two seasons. To create a foundation for the club, you need leaders. Jace, I thought we addressed that with the last two signings. I don't know whether Desailly's forgotten about them or he just doesn't think it's enough. But with Benucci and Biglia, is that not enough leadership in your side for next season? I think so. Definitely, you, you got you know two um, captains, as it were. I know they they both can't be Milan captains, but they definitely got experience in in those type of roles. And uh, Benucci, especially, has achieved a lot 
in in that capacity. So to say that we're lacking leaders, I, I don't know how many leaders you need. <laughs> like we've got we've got a, we've got a few, you know. Not to mention those two. We, we've got. I know you're not keen, but you know you got experienced players like a Barte in there. I don't know whether you call him a leader, but definitely that experience is is kind of a form of leadership, as it were, in terms of showing the kind of newer players what it means to be a Milan player. I think that's important um, as well. So I, I think Desai's been a little bit um, pessimistic, really, to be honest. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we definitely needed some more leadership. I I, I completely take your point about Abate, Montalivo and those guys on board. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll all play important roles. And Bonaventura... Um, you know, I know Donnarum is still young, but he's been knocking around for a couple of years. Romagnoli's there. I think they're all still young, but they've they've got leadership in them. So there's definitely plenty of it, I believe. But yeah, particularly with the Bonucci and Biglia signings, I think we've we've addressed that. We've in the particularly in the you know the the backbone of the team as well. It's like right through the middle of it. So yeah. you know, where where how much more leadership do you need? And I think there were reports this week that Bonucci's even started stamping his authority in the dressing room, you know, tell him everyone that this is what needs to happen and this is what it takes to win. So I think it's uh, more than enough to, to learn from and lead by example. But, you know, listeners, leave your comments on the YouTube video and let, let us know your thoughts. Have we got enough leadership or do we still need to address that? Is there any, needs to be more experience added to this squad? Um, let us know if you agree with Marcel. And uh, Yeah, it'll be interesting to, to, to see who Marcel would want us to buy <laughs> like who's available who has who is the type of player that we need as well as you know a leader I, I wonder who he's who he's got in mind um, it's true I think that's yeah. that, that's a thing of the transfer window that winds me up I think people are like yeah. they're really quick to jump on weaknesses and oh they need this still they need to bring in two or three more players name them yeah, you know, like who who can they get realistically? Who can they get value valuation wise? The value for money, they all seem to stop short at that point, don't they? They all, all they name targets that are just completely out of reach. What do you you know? How how is that even a possible signing? So, so yeah, it's a weird one from Desai, but no, we'll uh, we'll we'll see if uh, others agree with him. But um, all good. Jace, we had a couple of questions from Moz at Mister GL on Twitter. Uh, he agreed. Pretty slow transfer week, so forgive me. But uh, what's your stance on weird kit numbers? We've seen a fair <laughs> few number of them. Some have more meaning. You know, you've got the likes of Kessi, who wanted the 19. I think Ricardo Rodriguez has got 68. Both yeah. with, you know, I think they're both linked to their mothers, whether it's birthdays or something. I'm not too sure, but there's there's meaning behind them. But we've seen some absolutely crazy ones as well in recent times not at Milan but just in general across Europe yeah. what's, what's your take on them are you more of a traditional kind of man you want to see that 1 through to 11 in you know in specific positions as well or just let them have their kit numbers whatever they want I am I am a bit of a traditional man in, in that sense but, but I take you I do see like I agree there have been some crazy numbers um, I remember when Peter Cech signed for Arsenal and you know Chesney was was uh was out on his own or he was on his way out but he technically still had the number one shirt and you know Czech chose 33 yeah. because he was 33 years old and he wanted to be part of the Arsenal spine and the, the spine has 33 bones in it or 33 discs in it I was like okay he's, he's obviously put some thought into this but it's just really strange yeah, but um I think you know with with uh, squads getting bigger and like I just mentioned there players out on loan and and players you know keeping those shirt numbers while they're not at the club. I think if a player comes in and he picks a number that means something to them and then they keep it, I think that's fine. But, you know, when they just pick a number, you know, they really want number 10, but someone's got it. And so they just pick like 100. You think, what are you doing? Just take the next available number and, and, and get your number 10 when it's available. But, yeah, if, if like you say, with Kessie and um, with Czech and, and um, Rodri Rodriguez, if it means something personal to them and they want to carry that number with them you know through seasons and all they carry it to different clubs then that's that's fine you know we saw that in basketball Michael Jordan yep, had yep. the 23 didn't he he loved that and uh, I think Beckham when he couldn't get seven he had 23 in uh, in homage to Michael Jordan so that's yep. obviously got meaning behind it but if you're just picking a random number just for the sake of it just yeah. to be different I, I don't get it 
No, that's very weird to me. But uh, it is what it is, Jess. Let's, uh, yeah. let's let them take what they want. But um, the second part of his question, which was really interesting, I thought, especially timing-wise, because I think Atalanta are at a stage where they're trying to get their own stadium. But second question was, do you think we will stay at San Siro or build our own stadium? In an ideal world, I'd love to have our own stadium. And, you know, two years ago, we were on the brink of doing so. The plans were in place. Uh, you know, we had the permission to build and everything seemed to be going in that direction. But, you know, red tape, political bits and pieces, you know, everything got in the way and Berlusconi scrapped it. How important for you, Jace, is having that stadium? Because the situation is obviously different in Italy with the council owning the current stadiums for most of the top clubs. But to have your own revenue, to have, you know, all that, you know, even for the Milan to downsize, to have a sold out, 45 50,000 stadium every week like Juventus have done is that yeah. is that absolutely crucial for a, for a club and you've obviously got personal experience with Arsenal moving to the Emirates as well build on that but you know should Milan be still aiming to build their own stadium I think so I think you know given like you say the situation in Italy and like the big point for me is that the sold out stadiums you know having a stadium you can't fill is always going to be a little bit of a, a little bit disheartening but um, made a good comparison with, with Juve, you know, they're downsized and now they're constantly full and all that money is going to them, yeah. which is, you know, key, especially the way that European football is going. You've got clubs that can just pull out 200 million and, and, and buy Neymar or something ridiculous yeah. and you're trying to compete compete in the European stage with teams like this. You, you need your own revenue stream. Um, so, yeah, getting your own stadium, I think, is, is key. Yep, absolutely crucial for me. Uh, prestige and history of the San Siro is obviously massive. Having you know visited it, everyone, anyone that has visited it knows how special it is. But modern day football, Jace, we've got to move with the times and uh, get our own stadium yeah. in place. But yeah. Time will tell if that's on the agenda for the uh, the new ownership. I'm sure it is, but not close to it. So it'd be further down the line anyway. Uh, moving forward, we've got a friendly against Real Betis this week. Um, it's another opportunity for Montella to try his tactical ideas and just get everyone fit, ready for the Europa League qualifiers, the playoffs and the start of the Serie A season. Jace Bonucci is included in the squad, so uh, we'll get a good look at him uh, tomorrow night. Chance for Hakan to start for me, I believe. You know, he's, he's still short of match fitness and that's why we've, we didn't see him start last week. But this is a perfect opportunity to give him 90 minutes if he's got it in his legs. No Biglia, he's picked up an injury. So for me, again, Locatelli, another chance to start him, get him used to these new faces and get him settled in the team when he needs to be called upon. Uh, and then obviously there's a conundrum, if you like, a good one, that uh, up front with Catrone or Andre Silva to start up front. Give me your thoughts first and just who you're looking forward to see, I guess. Uh, those men names mentioned there, but again, I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing Kessie if he does feature, but... What are the key sort of decisions, if you like, for Montella to make in this, albeit just a friendly, but the big decisions for him to make? I think, you know, this this being uh, last friendly before um, this, the season starts, uh, I think there's a qualifier in between, isn't there? But yeah, yeah. you you want to see, you know, the, the closest thing, especially at the beginning, I think the game should start off with what ideally we would start the league with, what would be closest to our you know our, our proper starting 11 so I'd, I agree I want to see Hakan in there um, Andre Silva as well um, Lacatelli deserves his place in the fact that Big is injured but yeah I'm looking forward to see Hakan and seeing how you know having that creative player um, with Silva in the team Silva you know willing to do the running in behind and and so on you know having Hakan there to, to kind of thread those ball through pick those ball through and have Kessie um, behind him you know they're ready to mop up and you know get the ball out see how that all works how fluid we will be you know from winning the ball getting it forward and and creating a chance so i'm looking forward to seeing that and you know this this game's on my birthday so i'm, I'm looking for a nice little uh, birthday present from uh, the boys uh, certainly let's hope they deliver uh, yeah good stuff no it's fair, fair enough i think um Obviously, seeing Benucci in the back back line will be a massive bonus. Uh, look to see see him settle in and kind of. I know, like I said, hopefully we'll have a, a decent eleven to kind of give us yeah. an inkling of what's to come. But see him bossing things at the back will be perfect. Um, yeah, Hakan's the big one for me. I think we saw glimpses of him when he came on against Cryover. I thought he looked really, really tidy. Some some nice play on the ball and that creativity is going to be massive for us. So 
looking forward to seeing him get some get some minutes in his legs. Locatelli, as you mentioned, yep, definitely want to see him start. No biglia. Good to see him get some more minutes to prove himself. Um, and Silva, Silva's got a start for me if he's fit. Uh, I think prime opportunity really to kind of again give him minutes, but also to build that chemistry with his teammates. Uh, this is yeah last opportunity, so um, let's just get it get him on and uh, hopefully bags a couple of goals for his confidence. That'd be perfect. But yeah, all good. A nice little test for us and uh, gearing up for the start of the season. It's not 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 long to go, Jess. We're looking forward to it now. So yeah. Should what, be about good. ten days, is it? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Like I said, got that qualifier, but the playoffs. But um, yeah, yeah. Serie A season's right around the corner now, so cannot wait for that. Good stuff, Jace. Uh, I think that wraps us up for this week. Unless you've got anything else you'd like to add? No, I think we uh, covered it all. Good man. I think we had intentions of making this a shorter half an hour shot, but we've uh, yeah. <laughs> we still managed to get a forty-five <laughs> minutes out of it. So yeah. all good. No, good stuff. Thanks to all the listeners for listening in. Uh, we really do appreciate it and keep your questions and obviously the listens coming in um, and we'll definitely be ramping things up as we head towards the start of the season. Reminder, we'll definitely be um, focusing on YouTube in the coming weeks, so give us a subscribe on there, keep listening on there. But Jace, I think that wraps us up this week, so nothing else but to say goodbye to the people. Goodbye to the people. <laughs>